the role of the active follower. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, uh, first and foremost, um, I, I want to point a, a, couple, a, a, a few things out to you. This is a roadmap getting us to where I will stop talking and you can actually see this stuff. So bear with me. If you want to skip to that part, you're more than welcome to, but you kind of sort of need to understand what it is that I'm yapping about so that when you see that stuff, you go, oh, now I get it. Uh, so first of all, um, all followers are active to a certain degree. Most followers, however, due to circumstances well beyond, their, uh, well beyond their control, and more importantly, how they were, quote, raised, unquote, and what they've been told are not active, all right? Uh, they've quite literally had it drilled into their heads uh, that they cannot and should not have a brain in their heads or should not engage in active following uh, by a number of leads and teachers and whatnot. So in other words, not so much with that. So keep that thought in the back of your mind. This is why most followers don't engage in this idea of active following. Uh, secondly, in the way that I talk, not most people, but the way that this tango teacher talks about uh, the role of the active follower, I want you to understand a couple of things. One is that the role is fully accessible. It's a fully accessible state, and it is an achievable goal to attain for the sole purposes of becoming a very desirable dancing partner for every partner that you dance with. Yes? All right, let's move on. Now to answering the primary question, which is probably, it's the pink elephant in the room. Well, it's part of the pink elephant in the room. Uh, there's another part to that pink elephant. Uh, what is an active follower? Uh, the best way to define the role of the active follower is as, well, uh, um, is as an equal co-participant that contributes to the dancing couple in a myriad of different ways. Let me say that one more time. Um, the role of the active follower is an equal co-participant that contributes to the dancing couple in a myriad of different ways. You got that? Stay with me with this, with this thing. All right. Um, there are three things about being an active follower that we have to talk about even more, I know, more talking, yeah? Um, that we have to talk about before we dive into the when and the where, uh, which is primarily what you're here to, to know. All right, so, so let's talk about the other pink elephant that's sitting there in the room. This is a heretical topic, meaning heresy because most leads hear that phrase, active follower or active following, as the follower is taking control away from them. Even though, and here's the wonky part, even though, and most leads are going to radically disagree with me when they hear this, and most followers are going to disagree with me, and I will show you when and where and how, why you will not want to do, disagree with me, even though a good portion of that vocabulary that a lead wants to invoke, they've already ceded that control to the follower. Um, for the most part, most leads are guides. I know, I know, and, and I know that you don't want to believe that, but that's the reality that we find ourselves in today. We are guides because we're no longer invoking the idea of Lamarca-based dancing. So because that's, that's true, we're, involved, we're allowing the follower to complete our ideas. So yes? All right, so let's back up just a little bit. Sadly, most leads will not be able to hear this stuff. Um, most leads will not be able to hear what I'm talking about. Uh, and even worse is that most followers will vehemently not take ownership of their own participation in the dance. This is, the, this is a nasty double-edged sword for a variety of reasons, uh, in more ways than you can shake a stick at. However, the gains that both roles um, will well, gain uh, by encouraging the role of the active follower far outweighs any detraction that you can possibly imagine. All right, let's, I know that's a lot. Uh, secondly, we need to at least touch on the descriptive nomenclature here, i.e. the terms uh, going forward, which is to say that I'm deliberately using the words lead and follow to describe the dancing relationship, and I'm doing it for a reason. Uh, furthermore, when using the word follow or follower or following, I am not implying in any way, shape, or form or indicating that the dancing partner 
uh, known as a follower, has no agency or any level of control over what's, being, or what's happening to them. Quite the polar opposite, as you'll soon see. Thirdly, there are some questions here that, we, that are keenly important to what we're doing that must be addressed going forward. All right. So the first question that comes up is how to actively follow without seemingly to take control uh, away from the lead? Answer? Most followers, however, err on the side of caution here by adhering to a very simple truism, don't go too far, or know your lead very well. Uh, second, uh, second question is, um, how much active following is too much? Answer, it largely depends, um, as things stand in today's modern tango, um, it really depends on the lead that you choose and how, aware, and how aware that lead is. Make sense? All right. Uh, next question is, um, when to turn on being an active follower? Answer, everywhere. Uh, that one's really simple. Uh, and the last question is, how to actively follow without being pushy? Well, uh, again, uh, this is sort of very similar to the first question, um, but it's really about picking, picking a lead and picking them very carefully. The reality is that uh, there are a lot of leads who absolutely hate it when a follower goes off on a bender, as they say, or going off the reservation. Uh, in those instances, a lead will more than likely get a little persnickety, and that's a nice way of putting it, um, and, and either drop the embrace or just stop dancing with that follower because in their eyes, the follower is being wild or willful. Uh, and that makes that follower seemingly unruly. That's the reality. So it's incredibly important that you pick a lead uh, that you can engage in the process of active following with uh, to engage your fullest following self. Yes? All right. <sighs> I know, it's a lot. All right. So there are some rules to being an active follower. Um, there are five basic rules going forward to being an active follower. And they must be engaged at all times. All right. First rule is mastering the responsive follower, or sometimes what I refer to earlier as the role of the passive follower. In order to be an active follower, you must first and foremost pass through the role of the responsive slash passive follower, and you must, absolutely must, master this. You don't immediately arrive at being an active follower. It just does not happen. You have to grow into the role. It takes time and patience and a lot of practice. It goes without saying, but I will anyways, because it's, when you say it doesn't go without saying, you're gonna say it anyways, uh, that there is no hanging, no pulling, no pushing, no resistance, no tension, no force in any way, shape, or form. There is no wobbling, no wavering, no instability in any way, shape, or form. You cannot inject an idea into the dance if you're holding on, to, uh, holding on for dear life um, on your lead. That will slow that lead down, and you will more than likely miss your opportunity to inject said idea. Yes? All right. And so that we're absolutely clear here, that means not using your hands, not using your arms to stabilize, or your fingers to stabilize yourself against your lead at all. Are we good? So in other words, none of this. All right. So if you want to play in this ballpark, you must be fully physiologically capable of doing it. And to further my point to really drill it into the floor, if you think you don't do any of those things that I mentioned, and you have no way to gauge what I'm talking about, there's a very simple test that you can perform. One that can tell you whether or not you are doing what I'm talking about. Uh, so I, 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 want you to, I, I want you to bear with me. Here we go. Are you ready? Here's the test. Here's what I want you to do. What I want you to do is I want you to put on your best heels. And I want you to walk backwards without a partner in any way, shape, or form, without holding on to anything in any way, shape, or form. Are we good? What you're going to do is you're going to, hold, is you're going to walk backwards for 10 long steps at 10 beats per minute so that your feet land on the beat and you are moving in between the beats, but not ahead of the beat or behind the beat, all the while without wobbling or wavering for your balance. If you can do that, then you're onto something. If not, 
then you really do want to go look at my follower exercises to address those issues because they need to be. So I'm going to direct you to that little link that's flashing on the screen right now. It's kind of sort of important. It will address all of your issues. I'll tell you right now that it's going to take you a while to clear up those things. You're not magically going to like, oh, well, I know I've done them for five minutes and now I can magically, I should be able to do, I should be able to walk backwards. That dog does not hunt. This is going to take you a good, at minimum, six months to a year to clean up your issues. I will leave that right there. All right. <sighs> Point number two. You must understand the vocabulary of the dance. Which means you are no longer ignorant of what you're being led to, but rather being keenly aware that X is what's happening and then attempting to interject an idea based on that. Yes? And only, and if and only, there's space and, more importantly, time for it. More on the time part in just a little bit. All right. Now the next one. And this, is, this one is kind of sort of, I, I'd say it on the list of, uh, of importance, it's pretty much the game changer. Uh, you must be cognizant of the music. You must be cognizant of the beat, the pauses, and the musical phrases. Not phrasing, but the phrases. You have no control over the phrasing. The lead has control over the phrases. You, believe it or not, have an enormous amount of control over the phrases. The reason why this is important has everything to do with knowing where you can inject an idea, which is to say that if it's not in the music, then it's not on the floor. Everything, everything that you do is based on what's happening in the music. All right, item number four. Here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the rub. You must have a plan i.e., if you plan to interject an idea, you need to have planned out in your head ahead of time, based on what's happening in the music, of what you could possibly do. And then, here's the hard part, fitting it in. You have to have a plan in, and more importantly, you have to have a plan out of what you're going to do. Don't just interject an idea and then, you know, uh, and thereby uh, commandeering your, your lead stance and then leave them to figure out where, wh what's going to happen next. No, 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 not going to happen. No, you have to know where you're going to leave that lead. Yes? All right. <sighs> okay. We're almost done. Number five. At no point along the curve can the lead know what you're doing. <laughs> Miss Lee is going to love this one. Um, sorry, Ms. Lee is going to love this one. In other words, between us, between us followers, between us followers, um, the lead must be kept in the dark. I know, wonky. They can't have any awareness of what you're doing in any way, shape, or form. It must be entirely surreptitious for a whole bunch of reasons. Most notably, we don't want to tip them off because the moment that they're tipped off, they're going to go, she's, she's, she's being willful, she's being wild. I'm sorry, the follower's being willful, the follower's being wild. So in other words, we don't want to engage in that entire conversation. So giggle, laugh, ha ha, moving right along. Um, if you're doing your job right, they'll think that whatever you're doing was absolutely wholeheartedly, categorically their idea the entire time. If you're doing your job wrong, then you quite literally oversold it and you screwed up and now they know that you are being an active follower. Yeah? <clears throat> this sounds really easy. It sounds really easy, but it's incredibly difficult. Um, and here's why. Because if you're thinking in the gross, meaning big, um, that's the problem. You see, the secret to active following, the actual key to everything that I'm about to show you, all of, the, all of what makes this work is everything. Everything. Everything is done in the incremental, the small, the very tiny. You see, the kicker here is that all it takes is a tiny incremental change to introduce an idea, as you'll soon see. <sighs> okay, we're almost done. Okay. Um, okay, that said, so where can the follower interject an idea? Well, truthfully, I get, 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 get. truthfully, there are eight potential places, and really it's nine, nine, if you push it, push it a little bit, places where the follower can interject an idea. 
and we're going to demonstrate eight of them. Well, we're going to demonstrate a whole bunch of them. Uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to point out where those eight places are, and then we're going to demonstrate a few ideas. All right. So uh, the first place is, uh, is the obvious one, is that a, a follower can deliberately lag or increase the tempo, note the word that I use there, increase the tempo in any step that they choose, forward, side, or back. You have the ability to slow down or speed up tempo. Good? All right, let's move on. Item number two is there is a, and this one's going to be a little wonky until you actually see it, and it's the game changer right here. Um, uh, it is the deliberate reorientation from a step or a figure. And I know that sounds really, uh, really technical. In a little bit, I'm going to show you an idea of, uh, of how you can invoke this idea, not just in Argentine Cross, which is the obvious place, but in Ocho Cortado lunch. All right. Number, uh, number three on this list, it's the Argentine cross. Yes? All right. Uh, number four on this list is any turn. An example of that would be um, all three steps of the followers Milanete or and or a followers Calacito. We're going to we're going to go over those two precisely, uh, uh, specifically. I don't number five on this list is I list um, on my five social figures, any of the eight types of ochos that we use. Uh, that would be linear ochos, milonguero ochos, traveling ochos, circular ochos, over rotated ochos, anti ochos, milonga ochos, and what Miles refers to as dynamic ochos. Um, item number six on this list is paradas. Item number seven on this list are, is a burrita, and item number eight on this list is the linear ocho cortado and or the circular ocho cortado, more the linear than the circular. Uh, although, truth be told, when you see it, you're going to say, yeah, we can do this also with the circular as well. Uh, and last but not least, number nine, uh, and this is, where, uh, this is why I say that there are nine items on this list and not eight. Uh, that you can, use, you can in, in, invoke the role of the active follower in any and all vocabulary transitions going from one idea to the next, i.e., uh, going from walking to ochos, or uh, from ochos to turns, from turns to crosses, so on and so forth. All right, these are just some of the places where we can inject a few of these ideas as active followers, uh, thereby changing the dance and giving, it a, uh, giving us as followers a little bit more control over what we're doing and, and thereby becoming more equal partners uh, in how we're engaging the process of dancing with a partner. All right, so let's stop right there. And I need to and, and, and actually invite Ms. Leah up so that we can actually talk about this stuff uh, and actually show it to you. I know that's an awful lot of talking, but it was kind of sort of important that I get all that talking out of the, out of the way so that we can get down to the meat of the matter, and here's the meat of the matter, the whole reason why you're here. So now that you've skipped over that part, which I know most <laughs> of you did, you're like, oh, can we get to the, yeah, well, here it is. All right, uh, first and foremost on this list is the deliberate lag or increase in tempo in any single step. So we're gonna use a walking step in this instance. So in this particular instance, I may ask for us to go this, you know, this, this quick speed, however, Remember that one of the rules that we're invoking here is that whatever happens in the music, it happens on the floor. So while I may want to, you know, to, to race across the floor, if the follower hears boom, 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 she can slow me down to go boom, 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 and then thereby in, in invoking lag, yes? She did that all by her lonesome. So I may want to invoke, here, let me roll across the floor, and she's quite literally slowing me down. And I will feel that, and I have to respond to it as a lead. So that's the really easy one. Uh, here's another one, one that happens a lot, uh, and that would be a traveling ocho, where the follower has complete and utter control over how they execute this. So I may ask for that traveling ocho, and she's going to slow us down in how she executes it. She will take her sweet frackin' time to what's happening in the music to slow me down. Well, the polar opposite of that is true. She can also, because she, what, she, what I may be hearing is boom, 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 she's also hearing the half notes or the half beats in that, where she can go boom, yes, boom, 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 boom. And, I ha and you notice right there, I quite literally stumbled, and I had to go with her, yes? So 
followers, if you're going to you know, speed it up or slow it down, then pay attention to what's happening in the music. Make sense? All right, let's move on to the next item. And that's a deliberate reorientation from a step and or a figure. <laughs> what do I mean when I say that? Well, the really obvious one that's sitting here, the really obvious one, is this idea where we're engaging into the follower's cross there of the, of the Argentine cross. Now, notice what she did there. She resolved all by her lonesome. Pay attention. She has an enormous amount of control here. Now, I may, may have left her there, but she resolved on her own, and that forced me to, to do one of, one of three things. Either continue walking down the line of dance, or to take a side step, or to lead her to a forward step. It took the choice away from me, but she quite literally controlled what we were doing. This is what I mean by a simple reorientation. It's a tiny little thing. However, believe it or not, it's a lot bigger than you think it is. I'm going to give you one more, same piece of vocabulary. Same piece of vocabulary. And, how, and we're going to use another piece of vocabulary in a little bit to, even, to talk about this even more. So we're going to go right to that cross. And what she can do here is that step prior to, notice where she ends up. I'll show it to you from this angle. Notice where she ends up. Yes? What happens if she rotates her body that much? That means her resolution, she wants to resolve here. And that forces me to resolve, either resolve us here, which is where I wanted, or that means I have to do something else here. Yes? That tiny little resolution, that tiny little lack of resolution, or the reorientation of the, follower, of the follower's body forces other choices out of me. Make sense? Because I made that choice. She made that choice, not because I made that choice. She is making that choice all by her lonesome. That tiny little reorientation. Think about this for just a moment. Is that I'm, in, I'm engaging in a parallel system cross. Yes, this would be a normal parallel system cross. And she ends up directly in front of me. Yes, that's ideally what we want to have happen. However, the follower is hearing something else in the music. And she decides that she wants to do something else. And look where, look where she places herself. She deliberately placed herself there. And that me, means that I had to invoke something else in order to get us out of it. Now, to be fair, she should have an exit plan of where that, where the, what, what next step she wants to engage in there. Yes, that's what I was talking about. Have a plan. That, in that particular instance, she has to have a plan out. All right. Oof. I know, it's a lot, but you, wanna, you, you really want to pay attention to this stuff. All right. The next item on this list, we're going to use that same piece of vocabulary. We're going to use the, the follower's side of the Argentine cross the toy that is sitting here. And you're going to say to yourself, there's no toy that's sitting there. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. So I may ask for the Argentine cross. This step, her next step, quite literally controls everything that I will do. Because she has, she has space and time to engage in, i.e., a double false cross. So she'll go cross and then cross. Yes? Or Hmm, here's, a, here's an interesting one. I may lead that cross, and she can slow us down because of how long it takes her to cross her foot. Now, if she's being even more diligent, she will slow me down on the step prior to that, which means I may ask for this, but that step right there, she takes her sweet time engaging. Yes, again, based on what's happening in the music. So the follower has an enormous amount of control, not just in speeding it up, but more importantly, slowing down how that cross is invoked. Yes, this is a tiny example of where and how the follower can invoke and uh, of the role of the active follower to quite honestly control what I am doing as a lead and my choices that I will make afterwards. Now, if the follower is being due diligent, if the follower is being due diligent, she has not tipped her hand in any way, shape, or form that she's engaging in the role of the active follower. However, between us girls, wink, 
between us girls, we know that you was controlling the whole show, but that without you, there is no show. Are we good? I'm the show. The follower <laughs> is the show. Got it? All right. Um, now the next one. Item number, uh, item number four on this list. Uh, and and the, the two examples that I want to give you, again, they deal with tempo, uh, i.e. speeding it up or slowing it down. Um, but they're the obvious ones. So the first one is the followers of Molinete. And that would be typically, it would be back, side, forward. Now, I talk an enormous amount about, about the followers of Molinete, about them essentially ending up in the Leeds armpit and, 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 and taking up an enormous amount of time. And we need to go, 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 go. However, in the case of the role of the active follower, she may want to slow us down. So that while I may be hearing boom, 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 she's hearing boom, boom. So it would be boom, boom, boom. And I as a lead, I have to go with her. I have to, I can't rush ahead of her. Because again, no follower, no show. The show is about the follower. Are we good? Yes? All right. Now the next one. Uh, this one doesn't get used a whole lot, but it's on, it's on my list of, uh, of the eight types of turns. And that would be uh, the follower side of the calicita. So a calicita would be this idea. Yes? And again, this is, uh, this is a tempo-related tempo uh, response. So the follower can quite literally slow down that tempo of how I, how I lead that calicita. So that those forward steps. And, and think about this, followers. How often do you get to play with a forward step? Come on, I'm listening. Almost never. It only happens four times in the dance. Well, this is one of those four times. Oh my god, we could play with so many you, things you can, here. You can play with so many things here, yes? So this is quite literally mm -hmm. slowing us down, yes? I have to move at the speed that the follower's moving at. You control that entire piece, how you execute it and when you execute it, i.e. tempo. Are we good? All right. We can also keep the lead slow by us moving quickly. And what I mean by that is not letting him rotate quickly, even though I am moving myself quickly because the music is sassy or fun. That's my choice because I am the show. Couldn't have said it better myself. I was about to say that, but she said it much better <laughs> than I would have. All right. Um, the next on this list is, um, uh, again, from the five social figures, are the, uh, are, are the eight types of ochos. In any one of those ochos, you can either engage in a tempo change or an execution change. I'll just show you two of them. So the first one that's really, really obvious, and I've already showed it to you, but it's still on the list, and that was the traveling ocho. The tempo of how fast you engage that idea, you can slow it down or speed it up, or the lazy ocho, sometimes referred to more appropriately as the milangero style ocho, and again, it's the same thing. You're slowing the lead down, or you're speeding them up. Um, there's also the execution change. What do I mean by the execution change? She could engage in a lazy ocho, but how she engages the response of that lazy ocho, she could engage uh, an, an adornment based on, the, on, on what's happening there. Yes? So she can, and she can also do that with the traveling ocho. It does not matter. She has, what she's done is she slowed herself down, slowed us down, so that I have to create space for that, that adornment to happen. So there's also another tiny little toy here that's sitting here. Um, she can also engage in orientation, a tiny orientation change that forces us to do something else. I'll show you what I mean by this, especially in the case of the traveling ocho. So she goes too far with her traveling ocho. It forces me to have to go with her. And that, and look what she's, she's doing this. I'm not doing this. I have to go with her. She is engaging that ocho all by her lonesome, and it forces us to do another, to, 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 uh, to engage that traveling ocho, which is no longer a traveling ocho, but a rotating ocho. She invoked that idea. I didn't. Are we good? But he listened like a good lead shh, 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 shh. and came with me. Zip it. <laughs> <laughs> She's absolutely 100% correct. 
Um, I, I, as the lead, I have to be keenly aware, we will talk about this at the, at the end. Uh, I, as a lead, I have to be keenly aware and not force my follower to do X, Y, and Z. All right, let's press on. Paradas. Number six on this list are paradas. Par blah, 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 blah. What's a parada? Okay. Um, typically, the parada is done from the closed side, I'm oh, sorry, from the open side of the embrace. Uh, however, it's easier to show it to you from the, from the closed side of the embrace. Um, so, um, believe it or not, yeah, before, before I launch into this, believe it or not, um, the moment, I, I, well, first I'll show you the parada so, so that you understand the piece of vocabulary that we're, that we're talking about. It's this. The reason why it's called a parada is because it's, it's the, uh, the ADA form of the word parar, which means to stop or to halt. So I've quite literally stopped the follower's motion. I got news for you. Here's the, here's the really wonky part. The moment that I invoke that, I, as the lead, completely lose control over the situation. I may want to invoke X, Y, and Z, but here's the part I absolutely hate. I, may, I have to wait, W-A-I-T-E, I have to wait for the follower. Everything that happens from that moment forward, uh, from that moment onward, the follower has complete and utter control over what, uh, over what I'm doing next in a myriad of different ways. I will just give you two of them. One is the step over, and the, and, and the second is the step out. Both of those things have enormous levels of, of opportunity for the follower. I'm going to show you just one tiny little toy where the follower is going to take control over what we're doing, and I quite honestly have to go with it because it's making me look about 10,000 times better. So I'm going to show you just a couple of things here before, before we, before, so that I can show you the idea of the follower has complete and utter control here. So I may invoke the parada, but how they invoke that step over, she has an enormous amount of control. She can take her time with this and then down, yes? Or she can do it really fast. She can invoke that boom, 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 and then boom. Now the next piece is the, is the, is the step around. So she can again take her sweet fracking time with this, yes? Or, more importantly, she can invoke a whole bunch of, of, of adornments to engage how she takes that step forward. So there's loads of options that are sitting there. More lunch. <laughs> okay, the toy that, the, the, the one that will make you go, okay, there's something wonky going on here. Uh, this one I absolutely love. I, there are no two ways about this. I love it when a follower does this. Um, mostly because it makes me as a follower, uh, makes me as a follower, makes me as a lead wake up and go, oh, there's a partner here that, I, that has an idea. She wants to play. Um, I also want to touch on, before we go any further, that there's another component that's sitting there on the execution of the follower's step out. So I may invoke the parada, yes? She may take her sweet time, yes? She may take her sweet time taking, getting to this point. Now she's going to literally take control of the situation, yes? Hmm, ding, 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 and boom, boom, boom. She did that all on her own. I did not invoke that. She took control. Remember I said a little while ago that the follower needs to have complete and utter control over what they're, uh, over the, uh, over the path in and the path out? This is known as having a plan. Remember I said having a plan? This is that. This is the, this is the, 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 the absolute epitome of that. She had a, she had a plan in, that she knew that she was, she was invoking that, that, that parada, yes? And so she invoked that, 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 that turnaround as her plan to invoke an idea to either speed up or slow down the lead, but to add a little bit of flash, a little style. And the plan out was to come right back to where she started from. Yes? All right, keep that thought in the back of your mind because it comes in handy later on. Um, the last piece of the parada and the, the part that you're going to think, there's no, the follower has no agency there. Wrong thinking. So she's going to go up. She's going to go over. Her resolution out of this will dictate where we go next. Mind you, my idea is to go directly down the line of dance. However, she has a different idea where she resolves. And I have to go with her into that resolution. Are, we, are, are you picking up what I'm laying down? 
So remember a little, while ago, I, I, a little while ago I said that the follower has not only complete control, but I believe I said that this, ha this stuff happens everywhere. You're beginning to see why I say that this stuff happens everywhere, that you can invoke the idea of the, uh, of the, the active follower quite literally almost anywhere. There are a couple of places where we don't want to invoke it um, uh, unless you feel very confident, and we will, we're not going to talk about that uh, today. Uh, item number seven on this list is a barrida. What's a barrida? Uh, a, a burrito. No, it is not a burrito. Yeah, not. Yeah, we're going for burritos afterwards. Um, a burrito. No, no, a burrita. What's a burrita? A burrita is better known as a sweep. Yes? Better known as a sweep. That's it. However, there's nothing that says that the follower can't invoke that idea. There's nothing that says that the follower can't invoke a sweep on the lead. Yes? I may, be inv I may invoke that, however, the follower can push back and generate that sweep. Yes, there's nothing that says that the follower can in in engage in a, little bit of foot, uh, in a little bit of foot play. Everywhere. I'll just give you one more. I may ask for that sweep there, however, the follower can push it back and create, an, uh, create another one. Yes? There's nothing that says that the follower can't do that. Now, that would be an, uh, a passive, I'm sorry, a, a responsive follower. An active follower will quite literally stop me and change my weight and then ask for me to engage, ask for me to sweep my foot backwards. So she's going to take that foot and she's going to move. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Now, mind you, I talked her through that. But I had no idea. She had no idea what I was going to do. However, um, there's nothing that, nothing that says that the follower can't do that. So I may engage this. She's going to leave and then sweep me back. Yes? Make sense? All right. That's just a tiny little toy. This also, there's a whole bunch of these damn things. So I want you to think whatever the lead can do to, to that burrito, there's no reason the follower can't invoke that idea. Are we good? You feeling me? All right. Now we talk about item number eight on this list. Um, a little while ago, I said something about uh, that, there was, that there's one place where there's an orientation change will quite honestly change the game. It is in this piece of vocabulary, and it is on the five social it is, it, it, it is the fifth type of social figure, and it is known as the linear ochocotado. You can also do this from a circular ochocotado, and the moment that I point this out to you, you're going to go, I, I, I didn't see that. I want to show you the, the, the role of the, 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 the linear ochocotado. So let's do this from this angle. Yep, we're going to go boom, 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 boom. Yes, this would be a linear ochocotado, ideally what we're looking for. From the side, yes, so we go boom, and then we walk right out of it. Yes, notice where we walked out right out of it. We went that way, didn't we? Yes, huh. However, if the follower is invoking the role of the active follower, watch what happens to the very last step, her crossing step. Watch what happens to it. And pretty much watch what happens to the rest of her body when, you, when, when, that, when, when that's invoked. So we go boom, 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 boom. Watch, look at what happened. Now when she resolves, Look where, we're, look where we're going. Now, if she's being really greedy, if she's being really, really greedy, where she wants to control the orientation change, watch what happens. That crossing step gets very, very big. And it changed our rotation. And I had to go with her. Yes? Watch what happens one more time from this angle. She's going to be really greedy. She changed her orientation, and I had to go with her. There are no two ways about it. There's no nicety there. So I said that, the, you know, that, the, 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 that this can also happen with the circular form of that cortado. So again, it's the same basic construct. Yes? We're going to go boom, boom, and we invoke this idea. That forward step, <laughs> she's going to control where we go. She changed that all by her lonesome. The length of that step, how she invokes that step, 
how she, in, how she executes that step is all on her. The resolution out of it is what she's looking for. Make sense? All right. <sighs> okay. Now the very last component. And this one's really hard to demonstrate. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, because it's, it's such a nebulous topic. Uh, it's, the, it's, it's the transitional elements between choices. So I may, have a, you know, I may have the idea to go walk, walk, uh, walk, uh, traveling ocho, traveling ocho. Yes? One more time. I want to go walk, 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 traveling ocho, traveling ocho. The transitional element between the walk and the, and the traveling ocho, the follower has enormous control over. What do I mean by that? So I may go walk, walk, walk. This transition, now she has no idea what I'm going to do. And if she's paying attention, she knows two things. One, we've come to a small hesitation. That hesitation usually is invoked by the musical pause that's happening in the, happening in the music. And because she knows that we invoke vocabulary changes at the pauses, Because you know that you invoke a vocabulary change at the pause. Because she knows that, and because she knows that we're dealing with the five social figures, she can make a choice here. Hmm, yes. Wait, the first time I did that, we went to that side. She's invoking another change to go to that side. Or, I may go, walk, walk. She changes her weight and invokes that all by her lonesome. The transitional elements between these two choices, this is heretical. This is, this is the, the whole reason why this is heretical. Because the follower at this point is making a choice of the actual vocabulary that they want to invoke. They're no longer hinting at this point. They're no longer saying, eh, if I just reorient myself just a little bit, I'll get the toy I'm looking for. I'll get you know, places where we need to be so that, you know, so that we end up in the right place. This is no longer about that. The follower is quite honestly not just, transition, not just taking care of the transitional elements that are happening between those choices, but she's making a choice of what she wants to do. This is why this is heretical. And this is why, the, why I say vehemently that the follower, A, has to, have an, has to have a plan. B, it has to exist in the music. And C, most importantly, while you have a plan and it exists in the music, you had damn well better have an exit plan. Know your vocabulary and know where it is going to place you at all times. So those, those five rules that I talked about before, they're embedded in that choice. All the while allowing the lead to believe that it's his idea. Now, ladies, we know how to do this, especially if you've been in a long-term relationship. <laughs> I'm just saying. We're not in No, not, 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 here. not, not, here. not, not here. no. But, you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. thinks it's, it's his it's idea. idea. He's much more willing to go along with it. She's just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Now, I, I need to degenerize that statement just a little bit because we're, because we're, making, this, you know, we're making this about women and it's not. Uh, we also have to include that there are men that, that follow and that follow, uh, follow very well. Uh, and that there are, there are women that, that lead exceptionally well. Uh, and in both cases, um, regard, so this is why I use the nomenclature of lead and follow and not men and ladies. Right. Yes? We do, we do, I want to get away from that idea. So uh, the, the, the primary component here is that the first three rules that I'm talking about or have been talking about is that A, you have to have a plan, it has to exist in the music, and you have to know your vocabulary at all times. If you want to invoke a change, then you have to know all three of those things. Yeah, this is a dance. It's not an argument. Right? It, it would be lovely if it, it were... This is we are complimenting each other. It would be lovely if it were that. Right. Ahem, moving so right choose, along. Choose wisely. 
Yes. Choose wisely. All right. So that said, uh, I just want to touch on one more thing before we're all done and we move into the very last section. Um, this is not something that you immediately gravitate towards. This is something that has to happen over a long period of time. And by long, I mean if you're due diligent. And I've, I've actually trained a student, I've trained several students to do this, that, that went from nothing to something. Um, and it took about a year and a half. And that was me training them three days a week with a two month break in between of, over, over, you know, at the six month mark, I, two, I took two months off and then, and then another six months of training, me, uh, of training them. Uh, that was three days a week. And they came out to be very lovely followers. Several of them are in Boston, some of them are in New York, some of them right now are in Los Angeles, Washington, Berlin, uh, Hamburg, uh, Denmark, uh, Copenhagen, uh, all over the world. They are everywhere. And I got news for you, every single time that I have left a follower in that position, Every single time. This is not me tooting my own horn. I'm simply pointing out to you that with due diligence, with time and patience and a lot of practice, that the end result of, of the lead saying to that follower should be, wow, you're lovely to dance with, and they don't want to stop dancing with you. Why? Because you are starting to become an active participant in the dance and not, okay, okay, okay. God, I absolutely hate dancing with followers like that. All right, having said that, that is our little bit of today's practical tango advice. It is only the 10,000 foot view. It is, a, it is part of a much larger and longer conversation. I tried to keep the talking to an absolute minimum, like that's gonna happen uh, in this life. Yeah, you, you, you heard that giggle, like that's gonna happen. Uh, but I am a firm believer that you have to understand what it is that you're doing. So I know it sounds like an awful lot of talking, but you have to understand what it is that you're doing instead of engaging in steps, patterns, and figures. And more importantly, when we're talking about the role of the active follower, is that this is a concept and not about steps, patterns, and figures. So you quite honestly have to hear me yap about what's going on. Yes? Again, this is the 10,000 foot view. There is the two foot view, which I, I spent about um, four hours shooting. It's a nine part video. Uh, it goes into much greater detail than I just went into with this. And this is the short version. The longer version is, is, uh, takes up almost 22 pages of text and nine videos. It took four hours to shoot. And that was the short version. And, and that's the edited version. So if you'd like to see that, I want to see 50 likes. I'd love to see 50 likes on this video. If you don't want to see it, then, then, it, then only my intensive level students will get to see it. And mm, you. No, no, no. <laughs> Like I did. it, like it, yes, like it. Yes, like it. This is so good. Your dance just goes like, it's... Right, what she said. It's awesome. That you can't hear because she's talking over there. All right, <laughs> let's dive right into the next section.